What's up guys? Of course, welcome to Rebel Wi-Fi Battle with your thrill force, the Scarinder. And yeah, we're facing Josh. Um not gonna go too much into the team preview, uh, since it is linked down below what my thoughts of uh, his team were and what I was real afraid of. Uh, I'm really glad not to see either Manaphy, Yurash, or Scolipede, um, because they were really doing numbers to my team, so having them not present had me a bit relaxed. It definitely means that Josh took a more defensive approach to my team, which is helpful, because that means that I can probably go all at it, hopefully against him. Uh, he's bringing Chandelure, Aromatis, Absol, Latias, Zygarde, and Miltank, and here's the thing. I don't want to leave with Yurashi due to me not having Protect on that set at all. Uh, it's fully offensive because he has so many mods I can set up against. So I was hoping that I come to an environment where I can do that without risking anything. So seeing that his only default is Laddy Ass or Laddy Yo, sorry. Uh, I going to start off with my Landris. I do predict that he might as well start with Mill Tank himself. But if the situation is that we both exchange rocks, then my rocks are more helpful for me than it is to him, because he has a Chandelure, Chandelure is a get will down fast, and my Thunders is not that, it is weak obviously to rocks, but I can work around it much better than he can with the team he has, because I have a lot of mods that does so not really take that much damage from it. So anyway, I'm really scared, I really was so scared going up against Josh, because he has such a good run, and I knew that he will find a way to break me down, so with all this mind guys, let's go. So right, from the get-go, he will leave with Milk Tank, which I thought was incredibly nice. Because had he led with Absol, which was my initial thought, I knew that the knockoff and the Sucker Punch won't kill me, but I'm forced to go for Earthquake, I can't go for Rocks. So I get them off freely, which is super important, uh, and definitely going to help me throughout this game. Now, he will go for a Thunder Wave. I'm hoping he was over-predicting and thinking that I would switch out, which I'm obviously wasn't. Uh, so we go for Rock Slide here, and we will just eat that up. It is just a testament of the power that is Landers, really. So I'm gonna go for an Earthquake here, because the thing is, I was thinking it could switch out. Um, but I was thinking that if it switch out, it goes to uh, Latios. But it goes to uh, the Aroma Whale, and it's gonna get a nice EQ on it. There is no ramifications here, and Earthquake does so much damage, I am not even fully invested. But the thing is that Landers have you know, 145 base attack, that's nothing to really shuffle like this. I mean, even at uninvested inventor, invested area, it still does a lot of damage. Now, Aroma Whale will set up a wish here, and I have two options. Either I switch out, which could have been an option, or I go for a knockoff, predicting that he will switch out, because a knockoff is still in the area where he can take out, and if he goes for protect, then so be it. It still can't do anything to me. So I decided to go for a knockoff, actually. I thought it was a overall smarter play. I really don't want to switch out, unless I need to, of course. And here is the Mulgaria. The Zygarde, the beast, the monster, I really was fearing this thing because Thunders can't T-wave it, like that's an issue, if you set up a, I, or sorry, a Dragon Dance then it's over basically, I know that my um, Empolar can take a one boosted uh, Earthquake, but definitely not two, so I only get one chance to do this, now he will go for Camouflage, I won't lie, I was like, oh shit, this is, this is great, that means that Earthquake is not a two hit KO, <laughs> that was the first thing I got. Uh, so I'll actually go for a skull here because I was predicting a burn. I I had it in my mind. I, I'm gonna get the burn. Honestly, I went for skull because I got to, oh, away with his uh, with his Yasha berries. I was not thinking that he would stay in, and ice creams felt kind of risky at that point. Now I do score the burn. I will say this. I had some really really luck on my side because that really much shuts down the side guard for the rest of the match. Now I. Do you believe I switched out again? I was thinking I could go to Befelgor my, uh, my, and pretty much really shut down the, um, sorry, the Saigard if he decided to follow it because I was thinking I could go for a rock polish in that situation. Now he will switch out to Latios and that's okay. Uh, but the thing is here, I decided to go for a knockoff. I know Defog is coming, he's not gonna go for an attacking move. And I also find out that I'm faster, which is great. What is not that great though is that sadly, Knockoff does not do enough damage to put me in a 2 hit kill area, and pretty much here I was thinking, alright, alright, I go for rocks, I'll see if you have recover, roost, whatever, and, um, because Latios is now that I know it's slower than my Dianji, is not a threat anymore, it is a defensive set definitely, probably, since Knockoff did so much damage, it probably is a more special defensive set, but that was the only thing I had on my mind, so anyway I'm gonna go to Triumel, because 
I'm thinking of other ways since both its stabs, I shouldn't really need to worry too much and I can exchange that for an Ice Beam and I really want to see how much an Ice Beam do. I could have gone for a Toxic, yes, but I didn't feel that that was particularly necessary and without Shuka Berry, Leftovers really puts him in a good area. Now he will switch out and actually switch out to the Aroma Whale, which, due to the prior turns, did get a massive hit on this and Empoleon is going to get a kill, which is, wow. We don't see the offensive Pokemon taking that many kills, do we? So that was nice. To be honest, it's nice seeing Empoleon doing work. Um, but like I said there, the thing is, I can't really do too much with Empoleon in this match. It walls Latios to some extent, but that's about it. So Surf's gonna come in and with Corbin and Mega Absol. Now, this thing could pack superpower. That pretty much kills me. There is I can't take that, so I need to switch out to Befelgor and... Um, Pretty much threatened it out. I mean, Earthquake does not kill it. That's the worst part. I do hurt it a lot, but it's not gonna kill, and I knew that. But the thing is, I can actually force it out because knockoff and sucker punch combo with the team behind him is not enough to take me out. Now he will go for knockoff, taking off my uh, Joshua Barry, which is unfortunate. But at the time being here, I don't really fear it. Now he will switch out to Lodios again. Which is a good play, I mean, I don't have too many good plays left in me anyway with this mon, honestly, and it's not like I'm gonna go for Stealth Rocks with Absol like in front of me. So, I'm gonna switch out back to Crime Will and uh, pretty much see what he's all about. He is all about Earthquake, so a nice prediction from my opponent. Now, this does not do a whole lot of damage, so I was thinking, right, I can take, actually take another one after left towards recovery and see how much an Ice Beam does. Um, so, pretty much, this is me poking at it, uh, because... As I stated before, Knockoff did a lot of damage, it really did, so I was feeling that, alright, it's probably specially defensive. And I say so, damn, it definitely eat that up. So anyway, I'll decide to just fire off my um, Empoleon. I don't want to switch in anything against this Earthquake, and it could have gone for a side Shock or anything like that too. So I was thinking that even if I switch into Floater, I risk of getting a big hit on me, and I really don't want to do that. So I'm going to bring Dianchi, knowing that it is slower. Now I am slower by winning, but I think I can force him out and actually lure that I have a protect and switch in Thunderous, knowing that I'm most likely gonna switch into his uh, Zygarde and fire that off. So, we, yeah, that actually works. So Thunderous gonna come in and uh, I have enough power eyes and Thunderbolt. So, it, it mostly because he's neutral and everything on the team, so I didn't really need to work around it too much. And uh, I was thinking maybe I should go for a nasty plot here. Uh, I don't do it, um, he's gonna go for extreme speed and that does just about nope. Uh, the reason I didn't want to do it was because it, extreme speed did more. <laughs> because I want to be in an area where I can take a knockoff steal from the Absol, I really needed that. It is definitely around a 90% hit, but it definitely shows me that it isn't whatsoever defensively or attack invested, so I probably should have gone for a nasty plot there. Now we will stay in here, the knockoff will do, as expected, a lot of damage. And the Thunderbolt is not enough, it's a, at best a 90% hit. But, hey, Axe, <laughs> I get another round of that. I decided to go for Nasty Plot, knowing it'll go for a Sucker Punch. Uh, hoping for Fully Para, I mean, that's the only thing I got. Now we go for a Sucker Punch here, next turn he will be Fully Paralyzed, go for a Sucker Punch. And I'll wrap this up with a Thunderbolt, so, Josh, I'm sorry, that's, um... That's really, really unfortunate, and I'm extremely lucky here, obviously. And he's gonna go to Lumineer, and I'm feeling that I could KO it. I mean, it's in a one-hit KO area, but the issue is that I, it's most likely Scarfed, so I'm better off going for the Paralyzation, hoping for a fully para, which obviously does not happen. But the thing is here, with Lumineer uh, Paralyzed, pretty much means that he has nothing now that is faster than my Danshi. And that also means that this is pretty much GG. Uh, he has nothing here to deal, deal with to shit, <laughs> not my DNC. So I really like that I don't really use that many mods this game. I mean, I didn't even switch in Shaman, nor. Um, let's see, I didn't switch in Shaman, nor. Um, nor my Alakazam, actually. Which was, you know, they were. Alakazam was a defensive response to. Uh, or it was a sweeping response, but a defensive response to his Absol and. Uh, Shaman was a defensive response to, um, well, the rest of the team, more utterly, of course, Hiroshi and stuff like that, but since it didn't bring it, I didn't really need to worry about it. Uh, I should comment here, the reason I stay in and take this hit is because Earthquake, if it is full investment, is at best a 50% hit, and Moonblast will do 50% every time. 
And I could have gone for Call of Mind, but at the area that his Larius, or Larius was in, it was still an Oko. Um, it takes, even if it's fully defensive, it takes 80% of damage. I was like, yeah, let's do this. And this is pretty much wrap up the game. So yeah, I mean, with all said and done here, I won't deny the fact that I am very lucky in this game. I do get the burn on first try. I do get the paralyzation on first try, but what's up with that? And uh, yeah, I mean, so I won't really say that, you know, I deserve this game, but I will say this. I think Josh have a better team than he brought. Uh, I can't deny that fact. Uh, Josh really has a team that is immensely powerful. He has a lot of good um, offensive presence and I think he falls some, somewhere in between. He didn't have a real defensive um, team to um, wall my team. They didn't have enough offensive team to actually challenge it. He falls somewhere in between and I think the result was that he had a hard time switching in and out on the monster we're in. Uh, Landers did a huge number on his team early on because of that very reason alone. I mean, sure, this was probably the first time I had a good, <laughs> a good startup Pokemon from the get-go, but um, the only reason it worked so well also was because there were really no mod that switched in well to it. I was pretty sure, or I was pretty surprised, I guess you said, at Lodios, or Lodios, damn it. I screwed him up every time. But at Lodios should have Ice Beam to threaten out my um, Landers, obviously, but as I, the well match went on, it became more and more obvious they probably had Drake with an earthquake or maybe Psychic and Earthquake, you know, didn't really have adjusted it for Landers. And of course, Scarf Hirachi is very, very dangerous for my team and not seeing that was helpful for me, of course, because that means that a lot of my mods that were slightly faster um, was not have to worry about the mods that definitely were. I mean, like I said, Scolipede, Manaphy, and uh, Scolipede, nope, Scolipede, Manaphy, and Yurashi are very, very fast mons that definitely can challenge my team to speed here. The only one I had to kind of challenge that was the NG and uh, C and Alakazam. And when they didn't really need it to be used due to the speed tier, then that was pretty much my opening to actually work better against this team. So I will say that Josh have the power to break me down, but. I don't think he used that team, I think he fell somewhere in between trying to be both offensive and defensive at the same time. And it ended up being pretty much that he was forced to switch out a lot and Hex definitely didn't help him there. So yeah, like I said, I won't take this win as you know a deserved win because I might have won this one anyway, but it would have been much closer than the ending up being. Um, I can't really stress that enough, I think Josh team is better than my team in many regards so um, i'm i'm definitely being scared if i meet him in the final but i have two other battlers to actually attend to before that and i guess you should say that already due to this win we are now in the playoffs we kind of were in that before this but now it's definitely settled now i do know that we'll not pass eric and um that is because i didn't beat my team bigger than he beat his team so kind of revealing that but um just have you have that stated that we're actually looking to battle either um, Cicero Awesome, um, LA Galaxray, or Free Damion again. Those are the three battles we could be facing, and I don't know which one that is till, well, till today. So that's going to be extremely interesting. Friday is going to be an interesting day in general for the TBU because a lot of things is wrapping down now. So, yeah, not much more to it, Josh. As I said, GG, I'm really sorry about the hacks, and I think you have a better team to beat me, and I hope I don't have to face that. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, guys, I want to thank you for watching, and also, for fuck's sake, I didn't even mention that Scortacular has a channel on its own. It's linked down below, of course. Make sure to check that one out, for God's sake. It actually has a lot of guest narration, which is just incredible. Love gas is very on top of the sixth game. I, I love that. Uh, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next TBU video. It will be a slight update on what we're facing head on next, and um, yeah, pretty much this is gonna go down. So thank you everybody for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.